team by Webster and Lineham. Kevin steals the ball. Webster is breaking down the court and Lineham hits him beautifully with an over-the-head lead pass. Webster with a fast break layup. Blocked by Penn's Paul Little. What a recovery by Little. The ball goes out of bounds. If you're playing against a Big Five team, it's always going to be excitement. It's really, it's all out work. Exciting and thrilling down to the last moment. Sometimes we really go at it during the games, but we're always really good friends afterwards. The games are so intense. Come on, Jason, find your zone! Fans, students, and coaches stimulated by the thrilling action on the palestra floor. Right to the corner, passes left across the lane to a cutting heel, Robinson. Two more for Temple. Right on, you play tough, you get what you want. Right. Intercity rivals going head-to-head -head as far back as the turn of the century in what almost all consider the most unusual college basketball atmosphere anywhere, the Philadelphia Big Five. It rebounds for the Hawks, throws at the length of the court, and it's almost good. The Explorers have done it. For some 25 years, five Philadelphia colleges have dribbled basketballs on this court to determine who's best in this city of brotherly love. LaSalle, Villanova, Temple, Penn, and St. Joseph's engage in meetings that don't figure in conference races, but are recognized as some of the best basketball played solely for pride's sake. The beauty of a rural campus within city confines is LaSalle College. Founded in 1863, the Liberal Arts Catholic College is the ideal setting for a purposeful education. When the explorers take the court, it's all business as individual efforts act as catalysts to team involved. Blue and gold support pours from the bleachers, rewarding effort and priming LaSalle to continue its intense play. Whether it's pushing the ball off court on open breaks, lobbing it inside for power moves, or popping from the key, the explorers always bring the fans to their feet. Dave Lefty Earth is the headmaster of LaSalle and insists tenacious defense will set up the winning points in crucial games. Belly to belly defense, pounding at the ball until opponents crack, resulting in turnovers. of the Explorer Scrappy defense is a tower of strength by the name of Tom Petrovsky, the first legitimate seven-footer in Big Five history. The object in basketball is to do something or anything near the hoop, and as a center, you're always in the core. So I think it's important for a center, especially in basketball, to learn to be able to do everything uh, good because he's always the closest one to the basket. Then uh, to be a good team, you have to have a good inside strength. The explorers who have appeared in the NCAA tournament three times in the last six years boast one of the most competitive non-conference schedules, playing teams like Notre Dame, DePaul, BYU, Alabama, Duke, and Kentucky. With a proud tradition of being one of only 10 teams in all of college basketball to capture both MIT and NCAA championships, LaSalle remains determined to draw from its glorious past in grasping victory in the present. One word, which I think Jumbo Elliott says, is you're wearing Villanova and uh, you go out and represent Villanova to the best of your ability and uh, act like gentlemen and sportsmen and everything else will take care of itself.
Anytime we uh, go into a game down here, at either the West or in our field house, that, that's worth six, six or seven points every time you step on a court because of uh, just the tradition of playing in the Palestra. And uh, I think a lot of other teams psych themselves out just coming down to Philadelphia to play. Using that added edge at home, the Wildcats have rung up some impressive numbers over the years. Seven 20 win seasons since 1970 and an NCAA Finals appearance dot Villanova's recent past. As a member of the Big East Conference, scheduled regulars, Syracuse, Georgetown, and St. John's visit Philly to treat Nova fans to some great action. Like the other Big Five coaches, Raleigh Massimino stresses a young man's role in school. You're a person first and a player second, which I like his concept. You know, that, that he teaches his players. On the court, patience, poise, and ball movement are taught, making the Cats hard to beat. <laughs> Steady John Pinot, an all Big Five performer, is of the classic cat mode. Dominating inside with low risk, high percentage shots, Pannon makes opponent's baseline his personal territory. This is not to say the Cats won't run. So when the call goes out, it's the lone Granger leading the Nova spirited fast break. seen flying down court after a cat steal against the likes of Notre Dame, Virginia, and San Francisco. A Stuart Granger-led break needs no white horse or silver bullet to make rival coaches remember the Villanova Wildcats. I'm Al Melcher with CBS Sports in Philadelphia. Over the past few years, I've seen our town grow into a city of champions. The Phillies winning their first World Series ever. The Eagles soaring to the Super Bowl. The Flyers continually winning. As are the Sixers, with one of pro basketball's all-time greats, Dr. J. I've said many times, Big Five basketball belongs in the same category. Five schools in one city playing major college basketball. It's the most unique program in America. Over the years, more than 60 Big Five graduates have played in the NBA. And recently, Villanova grad Chris Ford played a key role as the Boston Celtics won the 1981 NBA title. Michael Brooks, Molly Johnson, Joe Bryant, Michael Batum are just a few Big Fivers in the pros. And head coaches like Paul Westhead, Jack McKinney, Jack Ramsey, and assistants like Dave Wohl, Chuck Daly, and Jimmy Lynham are Big Five alumni in the pros. We talk a lot about the players and teams in Big Five basketball on television, and it gets a lot of space in the newspapers. I sincerely believe Big Five basketball deserves all of the attention it gets. Come on, get over here, get over here. Are right, you going to still run the triangle? Are right, you working out pretty good? Stay high. Come on. The boys from Broad in Columbia have been led by Don Casey for nearly a decade. Now don't forget now our screens, man. We're going down and coming across. All right, now bring it in sidelines. Everybody get in a stack. 
During that time, many plays have been chalked up into success. Jimmy, you peel around. You peel around and go in the back court, all right? Temple's court play is the mirror image of its coach, team-oriented with a touch of flamboyancy. its opponent's back and flips the switch for the offense. It's only natural to think of running when talking about the owl o. Fast paced with balls flying every which way, but ending up for sure in one spot. Terrence Stansbury is one of the young energetic owl guards who always dreamed of playing in the big five. Being number one in a big city to, like Philadelphia means a lot to me or any player that's on a respected team, you know, in the Big Five. And taking the Big Five championship is almost, you get the same feeling like you take the championship in your division. I think the competition between all five teams, every game is usually down to the wire and fans get their money's worth. The city has a lot of historic sites and everything, and you meet a lot of people. There's a lot of people in the city, and it's exciting. There's hardly ever a boring moment. That has to go with Temple University. You're always meeting different people. Whether it's the city life or hardwood action, there's never a dull moment at Temple University. The University of Pennsylvania stacked eight 20-win seasons into the 70s. Head coach Bob Weinauer logged the 70s last and the 80s first. Long-range plans call for a continuation of this trend that seems to make the Ivy Leaguers very happy. Since the Jack McCluskey days, the Quakers have played team concept basketball. U of P scores out of their transition game, not only on turnovers, but by quick charges after opponents' baskets. The lure of Penn's Ivy education is different for everyone. Uh, I came to Penn because of uh, basically the Wharton School. I was uh, very interested in business, and I wanted the Ivy League school. Also, the opportunity to play here at Penn was um, very great at the time when I decided to come. As I got interested in Penn, I did some research, and I found out how um, strong a basketball heritage they had. And then I also found out that they play you know, in the Big Five and a tough schedule. Then I also kind of did want to get to a city and Philadelphia really did fill my needs. Paul Little and George New typify the type of young men Penn attracts. Hard working and intelligent, Penn athletes give 200%, 100% of the time. A determination that took the Quakers to college basketball's final four in 1979 and has brought nine Ivy League titles in 12 years. These quality individuals not only bring success to their school, but also to themselves. A brand of success fans in Philadelphia and the country have learned to expect from the red and blue of Pennsylvania. Just one of five teams that make Big Five competition among the best in America. Well, get your high post up and take your time now. We're 21 into a two with a score. I see if you can suck them into those back doors. You kind of stay tight, then when the ball's in flight, that'll be good enough to go out. Well, I'd start getting up now. 
and nobody over that locker room wants this game more than I do. Right? Like, well, no, great. Oh, Owls, cats, explorers, and Quakers enter into college basketball's most colorful arena, the Palestra. Cheers are equally divided, causing a continuous roar made up of fans and coaches alike. Basketball Philadelphia style begins at the opening jump and continues through a night of touring action. St. Joseph's win or lose has really done Philadelphia basketball and St. Joseph's University proud. They played a great game. At the moment, Gary Ward comes to us that UCLA has cut Brigham Young's lead to 12 points now in the second half. Oh my, look at this! St. Joseph's has the ball back! Seven seconds! Look at this! Look at this! chance to win this. Brian drew it through four players, seen Lonnie down the corner. Lonnie pulled up for the jumper we all thought he was going to take, but he passed it. Johnson made the layup, and then it was history. There have been plenty memorable games and players for the small university named St. Joseph's. Students that walk past Hawk Hill are filled with a certain pride that comes only from high achievement the type of success that has made St. Joe's a stepping stone for four of the NBA's finest coaches. Since the Big Five's inception in 1956, every St. Joe coach has been an alumnus of the school, the latest being Jim Boyle. It's the interbreeding that has given St. Joe an inherent quality, intelligent, aggressive play. The 1981 Hawks won 25 games en route to the NCAA's Mid-East Regional Finals and the Whitmer Cup recognizing them as the number one team in the East. St. Joe's emphasis on preparing its players for the real world has made Hawk players very desirable commodities upon graduation. People will remember you, say, Lonnie McFarlane or Tony Costner. Oh, yeah, you played for Overbrook or Roman, and you went to St. Joe's. And naturally, they'll probably do the best they can to help you out. With more City Series championships than any other Big Five team, an outstanding record against non-conference foes like Indiana, North Carolina, and DePaul, and talented players such as Brian Warwick to provide the last-second heroics, it's clear to see why there's so much pride atop Hawk Hill. Basketball, played with enthusiasm and spirit that engulfs the nation's fourth largest city. Top 
competition so intense and even that all five teams began the decade of the 80s with a shared city title. A schedule second to none, demanding on a young man, asking him to play conference games in a city rivals and non-conference opponents like DePaul, North Carolina, UCLA, and Notre Dame. The place to be for college basketball, Philadelphia's Big Five.